And this message is a warning, and it is a call to arms. But I pray, God, it will be an encouragement, because when you were born again, you were born to win. God did not save you for a defeated life. The Bible says, thanks be unto God, who causes us always, always, always to triumph in Christ Jesus. I hope you believe that. God's plan for you, precious friend, is victory, and he has a plan for you for victory in your thought life. Winning the battle of the mind. Winning the battle of the mind. You know where the battlefield is? The battlefield in your life is in your mind. The place the devil works on you is in your mind. And many people don't realize that, and so they lose the battle day by day and are always living under the heel of the enemy. The only way in the world the devil can ever get to you is through your mind. And that's his battleground. The Bible says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the mind. See, he works on the mind. Your mind is his target. Now, do you know if he can get you to believe one thing wrong, he can hold you for a lifetime with one erroneous thought. If he can just get your thinking wrong in any area, he can, he can stop you every time because of that thought in your mind. Well, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not less. See, he works on your mind. The devil tells you, I'm a failure. You're a failure. You get to repeat what he says, I'm a failure. I'm going to die early. I've got a disease. I can never succeed. I'll always be poor. I'll never have any finances in my life. My children are not going to amount to anything. Oh, my child is at a wreck, and, I, and, and they're dying now on the highway. All kinds of thoughts the devil torments your mind with. He's the God of this world, and the battlefield is your mind. But thank God we can win the battle. Amen. I said we can win the battle. You can change the way you live by changing the way you think. I hope that comes in. You can change the way you live by changing the way that you think. Why do you think Romans 12 verse 2 says? Listen to it. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. God communicates to you through the mind. God changes you through the mind. I clipped this. This is something that Charles uh, Swindoll, Chuck Swindoll wrote. It's, it's one of the finest things he wrote in my estimation. He says this, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education. Now, he's not saying that attitude is more important than truth. He's not talking about truth as we know it. He's talking about facts. Two and two is four. He says, attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, more than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is that we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one thing we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. The way to have a transformed life is to get your mind straightened out. Because the devil works on your mind. You can have eternal life in your heart, and you can have heaven in your heart and hell in your mind. And if you let the devil convince you in your mind, he'll bring all hell all around your life and all around your, li uh, your family. And he'll convince you everything that he's saying is true. But the Bible says that we ought to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. You ought to live and meditate in the Word of God. You ought to let God's Word take precedence over everything else that the devil brings against you. You ought to let God's Word transform you. Think like God thinks. Every time the devil brings a thought that's bad, 
Ask yourself, what does God think about this situation? What does God say about this situation? And then get God's thoughts against the devil's thoughts, and then you'll have the power to chase the devil out. All you have to do is say, devil, look at what God says. You start reading God's word to him, he'll run. Amen. The Gospels talk about Judas, you know, the, the progression of how the devil worked on him. If you'll read that, uh, the accounts in several translations, you'll find this to be true. In one translation, it says, uh, and Satan having suggested to Judas that he should betray you, uh, Jesus. Having suggested. Now, it's a very light word. It's a very important word. For when the devil comes to you, he will not come with a baseball bat and hit you in the head and say, God's a liar, and you ought to believe this way. No, the devil will come with a subtle suggestion. A subtle suggestion. Always so soft, always so intriguing to the human mind. The Bible says concerning Judas that the devil suggested to him that he should betray the Lord Jesus Christ. And Satan entered into Judas. You see, first of all, he will suggest something. Then he will put the, put the thought in your mind. If you accept any thought from the devil, he has a right to enter that door. If you do not accept his thought, you close the door in his face. And you can laugh with joy as he stands outside and shouts his accusations, say, devil, the door is closed. God's word has prevailed, and I know the truth. Hallelujah. And we can win the battlefield of the mind. I'm talking to people who are battling all kinds of of diseases and troubles and 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 drugs and and unclean spirits that come against you. Now the devil's told you nobody's ever got out in the drug scene. Nobody could ever live with what you've got. Nobody could get out of the trouble that you're in. The devil has put thoughts into your mind. But thank God there's hope for you. I'm telling you, you can drive the devil's thoughts out. You don't have to die and live in defeat because the devil is a liar and God is telling you the truth. One thought can send your soul to hell. One thought can hold you in sickness all of your life. One thought can cause you to go to your grave without healing in your body. Don't you know the devil has a heyday? He puts his on us and then points his finger at God and everybody says, God did it, God did it. And they get mad at God and the devil shouts with joy. It's time for us to expose the devil. It is a devil that comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, don't get me mixed up with him. I've come not to steal, not to kill, not to destroy. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's what he wants us to have. What am I saying? I'm saying, I'm saying that the devil can hold you captive with one thought. It's not the will of God to heal me. It's not the will of God to save me. I can never get out of these drugs. I can never have a happy home. My childhood has been ruined. You can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you sure can't keep them from building a nest in your hair. Isn't that right? And of course, all of us get all kinds of thoughts. But uh, you know, we just got to let them just bounce off and, and, and go back where they came from. They ought to be like water on a duck's back. Just there's no, no place, no place to hold on to. Thank God we can pull down the strongholds. We can cast down the And some of you are saying, how long? How long? Oh, God, you know I love you. How long? How long? Oh, Jesus, you know I want to serve you. How long must I suffer for you? How long, how long? I'll tell you how long, until you get the thoughts of the devil out of your mind and replace them with the thoughts of God, you'll stay like you are. But thank God, the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God 
to the pulling down of strongholds and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can win the battle of the mind. Yes, our minds in these days will be bombarded. The stock market begins to fall down and, and gold begins to rise and fall and, and the economic situation looks bad and, and war or war seems to loom on all kinds, all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of thoughts. Thank God we're living in Psalm 91. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank God. Oh, David said, How say ye to my soul, flee to the mountains? He said, My hope is in the God who made the mountains. How say ye, flee here for safety? I tell you, Psalm 91 is our safety. Thank God Jesus is alive. Now, I want to tell you, folks, it's your mind that's been bombarded by the devil. You've accepted that. And fear has come in. And torment and depression and all kind of regression into the darkness has come upon you. And, and there seems to be no hope and no way out. It's all because of a thought, thought processes that the devil has put in you. You take the word of God. The word of God says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall honor me. The Bible says, call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, Jesus said, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. Replace those devilish thoughts, those depressing thoughts, those discouraging thoughts, those defeating thoughts. Dis de destroy them with the Word of God. Get your Bible, stand up on your feet, and rise up and win the battle of... And this message is a warning, and it is a call to arms. But I pray God it will be an encouragement, because when you were born again, you were born to win. God did not save you for a defeated life. The Bible says, thanks be unto God, who causes us always always, always to triumph in Christ Jesus. I hope you believe that. God's plan for you, precious friend, is victory. And he has a plan for you for victory in your thought life.